Hello and welcome to another TLDR News UK video. Now this one isn't in any way like anything we've done before. This is a completely new video for us to make. Over the last few weeks, we've been watching lockdown be eased and we've seen businesses finally able to reopen. Now we were thinking over the last few weeks at TLDR, what's it like for those businesses? What's it like having reopened after this pandemic? What's it like having been in lockdown during this pandemic? Have government given enough support to businesses to tide them over? So we asked them, we put a plea out on our social medias and asked for people to contact us. I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody that got in touch and only because of them that this video has been able to be made. Um, so we'd like to say a huge thank you. What's your name? Where are you from? And what do you do? Hi, my name is Joe. I'm from Ulverston in Cumbria and I work for the National Trust. I'm also a commissioned playwright and marketer for the Ashton Group Theatre in Barrow. Hi, I'm Hannah. I'm from Leeds in the UK and I'm a personal trainer. I own a gym called W Fitness with my mum Caroline. Hi, my name's Martin and I'm a wedding photographer in Nottingham. Good morning, I am Sophie Mulgrove, myself and Kerry Freer who own Barbella Dog Groomers in Beverly. Okay, hi, so my name's Joe, I own Windows Etc, based in Colchester, and we're a glazing company. So Hi, I'm Marty. I'm a cloud consultant and lead developer of TeachStream, which is a meeting application that allows teachers to securely deliver live lessons to students at home. Hi, my name is Nuno. I'm from Portugal and I own a tavern. Hello, I'm Rafael. I'm from Austria and I'm the CEO of Safing, a privacy focused software development company. My name is Joe and I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, my family owns a Chinese restaurant here in St. Louis. My name is Justin and I run a small business called JD Customs. We make custom computers and offer electronics repair services. How long have you been in lockdown for? So I have been in lockdown since the 23rd of March and I'm currently still self-isolating as I'm 28 weeks pregnant. Portugal has not been in lockdown since May 13th, so basically everything has opened. My company, I uh, put in lockdown by the end of February. Missouri went into lockdown on April 6th and those restrictions were eased in late June. How have you found lockdown? Personally, I found lockdown quite hard. Uh, shortly before, my mum was diagnosed with a cold breast cancer. So through lockdown, she's been receiving chemotherapy. So that's been quite difficult. So I've had to attend like hospital and midwife appointments by myself. My husband hasn't been allowed into those. But also the worry of being self-employed. Am I going to have a business to even return to when this is all over? Uh, lockdown has been very stressful. We obviously had to furlough all of our members of staff and that brings a concern that you don't know what's the other side of that and are we going to still come back with the same numbers and be able to keep all those employees on. The lockdown was forcing us to work from home. Having the same space where you work, being the space where you live, took its toll. Our business has seen a dip of about 40% in gross revenue. How has your business been impacted by coronavirus? We got no help off the government, so obviously yeah, seven weeks out of work, no money. We had no idea when we was going back or when we was going to be earning money again. We saw our business literally dive off a cliff uh, all in one week. Uh, obviously weddings were understandably banned um, and that meant that nothing could go ahead. So my business has been positively affected by coronavirus. The adoption of TeachStream has been outstanding and it's great that we are making a difference in the community and helping schools through a pandemic. The tavern, uh, during the few months that I was in lockdown, I did takeaway. It tripled in terms of size of what I made before in takeaway, but it doesn't compensate the fact that I uh, don't have a flux of uh, customers coming inside the bar because I don't sell drinks. The largest impact for me has been part availability. Because of all of the shipping restrictions from China, factory closures, warehouses in America not stocking their normal parts in favor of stocking medical supplies and other necessaries. It's been really difficult for me to get a hold of parts and if I can get them oftentimes they're still way higher in price than they otherwise would be. Have you been able to come up with creative solutions to allow your business to remain functioning? We decided to create a lockdown style film of the play. So we've been filming that via Zoom, which, is, <laughs> which has been interesting. Uh, we sent out costumes, green screens and lighting to the actors and they've been recording off their phones. 
In terms of the Tavern, I just pretty much focused on Uber Eats and uh, publicity online uh, to say that we were selling mostly through Uber Eats. It kind of worked. The most creative solution that we had was a video coffee break for all of us, where I encouraged people to come online with their coffee and um, actually just talk and be around each other, so to speak. At the beginning of 2020, with coronavirus starting to spread across the world, we worked with schools across West Sussex to identify potential pain points in delivering live interactive lessons. Has the government helped you and your business survive? Um, luckily, my wife and I are both directors, so we've took the decision to furlough one of us, so my wife's furloughed. Um, but for myself, you know, obviously we're not receiving any um, government income for that. Unfortunately, obviously lockdown happened when we were planning on leaving our previous job to open this place, so we got no help at all. We are very grateful to the government. Without the furlough scheme, without the business rates rebate, and without, I guess, just the general support to every level of industry, so yeah, we are pretty grateful. No, I don't think so. Uh, so the only thing that I recall the government doing to assist small businesses is allowing us to not pay rent. Well, Austria offered a couple of subsidies to put people into short-time work and to subsidize a lot of their salary, but we didn't take advantage of that. We were able to receive a loan from the Payment Protection Program, or PPP that we call it here. The short answer, me, yes, through the unemployment system, but my business, no. Since June, I've only been taking work for really small jobs, because if I make too much money in a week, I lose all of my unemployment benefits. If your business is customer-facing, how cooperative have your customers been about the lockdown? So I can hand on heart say that 99% of our members have been so supportive and amazing. We have found both trade and retail customers to be exceptionally supportive. The first weekend that I opened to the public, I've had groups, very large groups of uh, 10, 12 people gather around one uh, small table, let's say of six. And uh, when I'm asking them to uh, separate because it's a legal requirement and it's a safety concern, they get very irritated and annoyed. Um, and generally speaking, the customers have been relatively cooperative for the most part. Customers come in wearing masks and they respect social distancing, though there have been a few cases where the customers actually don't wear masks and they don't really seem to be taking the whole uh, pandemic very seriously. What measures have you taken to make your business COVID secure? Okay, so one of the things we've done is obviously switch to virtual meetings as much as we can. Our customers are uh, recommended to wash their hands as well and use their masks when coming in. Only when sitting down on the table, they can take their mask off. So for our business, we decided to make it carry out or curbside pickup only, no dine-in. If your business is still closed, when do you think it will reopen? Um, so our business is still closed at the minute, but we have been given a reopening date of the 25th of July. So the countdown is now on for us. We're very excited to reopen. So we've seen schools plan for all types of eventualities going into the new academic year. Um, such examples of this are blended 50-50 teaching, where perhaps half a class are at home and half a class are in the classroom. We simply don't know um, currently how that's going to play out. Um, and going into September, um, we just have to wait and see, really. If I make close to $200 in a week with my computer business, then I lose the entire $800. And so it creates this situation where I truly am incentivized to do nothing, to not grow my business or operate at just that minimal level. If you could say anything to your government, what would you say? So I hope that the government can appreciate what the arts do for people outside of lockdown and give them the funding that they need afterwards. Honestly, the only thing I'd say to the government is to just please explain yourselves more um, and provide more clarity. So I would basically say to the government, help those businesses that are just setting up because we could be the future. Please, 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 the wedding industry needs a timetable. State-owned or uh, partially state-owned companies like the electricity bill, the water bill, and the others of the sorts, I, I don't know why we can't have some sort of a break. Don't open up too early. Don't open up too fast. This could have been prevented. We here in the US, we definitely had enough warning and enough of a heads up because there were many other countries that had been dealing with COVID and the, with the novel coronavirus way before it became a huge issue here. Is there anything else you'd like to add? 
The After Rain film is due out later this year, so if you want to keep up to date with that, you can follow our Instagram and Twitter, which is at after our underscore official, or like our Facebook page, which is After Rain by Joe Stelland. Thank you for listening to my family story. I hope everybody stays well. If you want to hear me discuss more about the current events and news here in the US, go ahead and stop by my channel, Centrist Central Podcasts. I got a couple of pins, wait a second. So, just so you see, there is an EU and an Austria pin from your pin store. I got them with the coloring book and I enjoyed your show, your content. I wanted to let you know. Anyway, TLDR, thank you for taking the time to listen to me complain about the government. And I hope you guys have a good day. Cheers. Thanks again to everyone who took the time to send in their videos. If you want to be involved in future videos, then be sure to subscribe and follow us across all our social networks, as that's where we will put out calls like this one in the future. If you do want to find us, just search for TLDR News. Also, let us know if you like this video, because we might make some more in the future and we'd like to know what you think. Thanks so much for watching, and a special thanks to our Patreon backers, who make videos like this one possible. If you want to see your name at the end of the videos in the future, then sign up to our Patreon. It's linked down below.